So today, we are going to modify the trolley from the Main Street Winter Village set. And we're going to add in a powered motor, which we need a hub, and a color sensor so that we can make it go back and forth on our track on my little Winter Village town. All right, now in order to do this, uh, we have to take this apart. And I was gonna do it myself and try to figure it out, but I was like, you know what, let me check Rebrickable. I bet you someone's already done it, and they have. So I'm just gonna Rebrickable. It is a free uh, download for the instructions, which go ahead and combines the motor, the hub, the color sensor into this, and we'll see how it performs. Oh, one other thing. So uh, they're using their app. I'm not going to use the app. I'm going to add uh, pie bricks to this, which I've done on a few other projects now. I haven't done any videos about them yet, but I'm adding pie bricks. I'll put some links down below for that where you can figure that out. But there is another channel who already did this because they have a very small city and they don't have a space for like a full loop. So they just did kind of like a, a track kind of like this, which is exactly what I need for my winter village. So I'm going to take this apart, follow the rubricable, and then show you once I have it rebuilt. All right, well, per the instructions here, these are all of the extra parts. Now we're going to disassemble. I'm gonna leave the top the same because I don't think that changed. stays on there well and it looks all right so one thing there's a lot of extra parts <laughs> um, quite a few and then one of the um, tan wedges I got was a piece of pizza so I need to find a different one for that um, but it's a little bit different so he kind of rounded off the front parts but other than that most of the build techniques are identical it's just the way that he did the front so it's a slightly different um, again lots of extra parts I might see if there's a way that I can reintegrate uh, maybe some of the undercarriage things onto here. Um, if I use some studs to do it, um, I might be able to figure out how to make that work. I'm unsure, um, but there's definitely a way to try and have some of these 
um, still be part of the set, but I'm going to have to play with it for a minute. But for right now, uh, we're going to go to the computer and we're going to pull up the PyBrick site and we're going to put PyBricks on this uh, hub. Let's go do that. Yeah, I'm going to do it from here first because I can't do it on the computer because my computer doesn't have a Bluetooth adapter that will see these. It's They're selective ones. I have some new ones in, but I haven't put any of them in yet. Okay, so you're going to go to code.pybricks.com. Okay, and I'll put links for this down below so you have all of that. We're going to go ahead and hit on the settings cog. We're going to do install Pybricks firmware. We're going to select our city hub. Next. Uh, I've read the conditions. Sure. Next. Uh, you can name it if you want to. I'm not going to name it. I just leave it that what it is. And hit next. Okay, and then we are going to hold this in. It tells you what to do here. Uh, so, or disconnect anyway, that's fine. Um, that's, that's flashing. Hit next. It says Lego bootloader. I'm going to hit pair. And now we can take our hand off of it because it tells us that. And now it's erasing the old firmware and it is installing Pybricks on our hub. Now, if you want to go back to the official LEGO firmware, so you don't want to use Pybricks anymore, it's super simple. Uh, all you have to do is open up the LEGO uh, control app, like that you would normally control your city trains with and things. Connect to this hub and it will install the most up-to-date LEGO firmware onto it. Super easy to be done. Um, it takes whopping, what, two minutes for it to reinstall that, so that's easy. Now, what is Pybricks? Pybricks is basically Python on your city hub so you can program it. Now, if you're not good at programming, don't worry. There are plenty of examples out there of what you can use, like code you can use for these. So I have this on two of my trains that are running dual motors, so they both run the same. Uh, it also makes it kind of like speed up and slow down nice and easy instead of just one, two, three, like very chalk, very choppy like the regular firmware does. Um, and then the firmware we're gonna be using on this Again, there'll be a link for that down below, is going to help us use the sensor and the motor for it to be working with the colors. So I'll show you how we install that. We're actually going to go to the computer. It'll be easier to do that than doing it from my phone. This is almost done now. This took maybe, what, a minute and a half to do. The new firmware is installed, and it is complete. And now that it's flashing blue, we know that that is good to go and that we're already connected. Because if I go up here, it tells me Pybricks Hub pair, which were already paired to it. It was waiting for me. So now we're paired on Bluetooth and it is ready to go. We can start typing in here, but let's go to the computer and I'll show you how to install the code on this. All right. So here we have Pybricks open up again that I had on my phone. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Bluetooth button. I'm going to hit the button on my hub and there it is. I'm going to hit pair. And again, just because of the Bluetooth adapter I'm using on my, my motherboard, uh, it just is not compatible with the default firmware so i have to load it from my phone uh, but you can try it from your computer if you want to all right so now that we're connected uh now what do we do we need to add our file so here we have we're going to add our file here but we're going to go over here to eggy bricks github and they're the ones that created this code and all we have to do is hit this little copy raw file button come over to here we're going to hit this we're going to select our motor and we're going to call this something. So we're going to call this. Uh, I'm going to call this my winter village tram. Okay. We're going to hit create. We're going to come here and we're going to do paste. I'll allow that. Yep. And there is all the code that we need. Play. Looking for green. All right. So now the hub is lit up. And it is looking for a green um, piece. So let me go get some track and I can try this out and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, now if we look here at the bottom, we can see what it's actually doing. So it's going back and forth here on my desk and it's going back and forth between the different colors, seeing them and then going forward. So what this code is telling it to do is it's telling it a couple things. Number one, that we have our motor in port A and our sensor is in port B. Again, this is the color sensor that we're using. And if you're using the color distance center, if using Mindstorms, but we're not using a Mindstorm um, sensor. So, and then here's what you can do. So the station stop time is 2,500 milliseconds. Uh, then we have our end of line stop time. So this is whether it goes to the 
um, red or the um, yellow. Okay, because we have green in the middle, red at one end, yellow at the other. Okay, so then again, it's looking for green. So again, green is, once you first start this, you have to kind of like just move it over the green. And then once it sees that green tile, then it's like, oh, it's time for me to start and it will move forward with it. And then it's gonna go till it sees yellow. It's going to wait, end of line. It's gonna go back to green station. It is going to stop at the station, let people on and off. Then it's gonna go to red. Red is the other end of the line. Then it's going to stop there for a few seconds and then it's going to proceed back to the beginning again all you have to do is copy all this in and it is done okay so right now i'm just running the code from my browser right here so we're going to go ahead and stop this we've already um, sent the program to it so now what happens is if i turn off my hub okay we're going to disconnect here okay all you have to do is hit the button on your hub and it will start the code, look for green, roll it over green, and then it's going to go with it. Simple as that, okay? And then to stop it, you would just have to hit the button again. All right, well, you can see it's running here. Uh, I got it working. It definitely took a little bit more than I thought it was going to, so I had issues with different color tiles. I found that red and white work the best. I had to seal up. You can see my track is completely closed now. I had a bunch of 2x8 dark gray plates that I was using for other projects. So I had literally like a bag of 100 of them. So I took a whole bunch and put them all lengthwise down the track. Uh, while that does raise the track up, I'll need to probably put some more on the edge here and probably need to ballast this now. But for right now, uh, this works out. <laughs> At least it runs reliably back and forth. This was something that Eggy Bricks had talked about being kind of an issue with this sensor. They talked about using an older uh, Mindstorm sensor that has been discontinued and honestly is expensive and hard to find now. Uh, on Bricklink there is very few sellers in the US like three or four and on Amazon it's sixty dollars. So where this sensor I believe was like 13 or 18 like it's a cheap sensor obviously not the best sensor. So it now works. Um, I have changed the color code. All I had to do was change it from the green to white and one of these was already red. I changed the other one to red and just put a red tile on each side and it just goes back and forth. I did rebuild this just once before now and I tried to make it so that the um, the bogey so that the powered wheels would be able to turn. Let me get a set. So my track in my Lego Winter Village, uh, ha it's a curve. Uh, well, this does not work because it locks this straight. It can't go anywhere. So I tried using this Technic um, 2x4 plate to allow it to swivel like this and turn with the turn. I could not get that to work whatsoever without doing an absolutely massive overhaul of this build. So I decided not to do that. Uh, and I just, I'm gonna have this go into the city, be straight like this, so it'll go back and forth. They won't look as cool, but I mean, there's really nothing I can do about it. Um, the only thing I could do is whip out the flexi track and try to make the curve more gradual and not so, not just the straight 90 with the four, uh, four turns. Um, but for right now, for this year, this is going to have to do. I think next year when I rebuild the city, I will have to look into maybe trying to do this a little bit differently. But for now, this will work. Uh, one last thing I wanted to add is uh, if you look here, maybe, Okay, if you look here, I just doubled the cables over, so both cables come up this side here. I just kind of doubled those over, and I used two 2x3s two or 2x2s, two whatever you want to use, and a 2x4 to go across to hold the cables down, and that way they are less visible from the side. As you can see, they come up right there, but they're less visible, and the top goes on uh, super easily without bulging up at all, because that was a problem trying to manage those cables. So now it looks a little bit better. I am calling this complete. So let's take a look and see what it looks like in our Lego Winter Village.